Well, you know how I feel about street art. We came across this the other day, and I figured now would be a perfect time to do a video on the filming locations for E.T. Just looking at this, you can tell that the artist took some creative liberties. I mean, obviously the moon was probably a business logo, and there's E.T. and Elliot wearing a cape, and instead of a bicycle, it's a shopping cart. Oh, hey, baby ghoul. Hmm? When you were growing up, did you guys watch E.T. a lot in your house? No. Um, I mean, I was familiar with it in my youth, but it's not something we watched regularly. I, I would say I probably didn't really, really watch it until my adult years. In my household, however, growing up, E.T. was very, very big. In fact, when I was growing up, especially in grade school photographs, I looked a lot like Elliot. Don't believe me? Well, against my better judgment, here's some elementary school photos of me. A lot of E.T. was filmed here in Southern California, and a lot of it was filmed in Northern California. But because we're here in L.A., we're just going to be focusing on the Southern California locations. It's a beautiful day to do this. It's a bit of an adventure. A lot has changed over the years since they filmed E.T. You ready, baby ghoul? This is going to be fun. This is Dee Wallace, the mom for me team, and you're watching Grim Life Collective, and they're finding you all the places that we shot this amazing movie. Come on. Hi. My name's Robert McNaughton, and I'm doing this spot for Grim Life to make sure you watch. They're going to go visit all the locations for E.T. Of course, if you're going to do a filming location video on the movie E.T., it only makes sense to start it at Elliot's house. The house looks pretty much exactly as it did when they were filming here in 1981-82. The only big difference is all the different trees and shrubberies. This mailbox, back when they were filming, it was a lamppost. line up a couple different shots, especially this one here where Drew Barrymore is crouched down at the bottom of the driveway and her mom, who's Dee Wallace, comes down and Drew Barrymore is saying, look what Michael did, as she hurries Drew Barrymore into the car and drives away. There's a couple times during the movie where the camera is pointed down the driveway and you see this house in the background. This shot here I'm going to show you, Elliot is kind of peeking out of the garage and then he takes off down the driveway and you get to see this house really well. Sadly, we can't get any closer to the cliffside overlooking the town than we are right now. They got this fence up, but there's this really weird scene, at least I think it's really weird, where the government folks are getting here to town and you see this close up of the keys jingling. It all happened right here. This is not the exact spot, in fact, if we wanted to get to the exact spot, we'd have to go on the other side of this house, which we just can't do. From there, you'd be able to line up shots from the houses below. And I stood on my tippy toes and I looked and I was able to see some of the houses and probably can't see it from right here, but I was able to see some of the houses and this is not the right angle. Now, if you look over here in this scene, you're gonna see part of the side of the hill, which could have been this, but I think it's the one that's a little bit further over. But this is it, where the cliffs, the camera's looking over the cliffs and you get the close-up of the keys jingling. Still, it's, it's pretty darn close. All 
Our next location is the bus stop. It wasn't a big scene, but it was kind of comical. In this scene, Elliot comes to the bus stop and all of his friends are already up here on the sidewalk. We see this grate, that house, and this light post in the background. When he gets here, one of his friends says, what, Jessica? Hey, Elliot, where's your goblin? He's not a goblin. He's a spaceman. Oh, yeah? yeah. Center Supremus. Zero charisma. Center Supremus. Zero charisma. Center Supremus. Zero charisma. Yeah. Where's your goblin? He's a spaceman. Oh, oh, that's an extraterrestrial. This is image. Yeah. And you're such a sin of supremus. Zero charisma. Sin of supremus. Zero charisma. Sin of supremus. Shut up, Greg! And now for one of my favorite scenes from the movie E.T., the Halloween scene, the trick-or-treating scene. Now, who doesn't love Halloween? Now, there's something very special about this. This intersection right here is where the Halloween scene took place, but it's right over here where Steven Spielberg gave a nod to George Lucas and had Yoda pass E.T. in the street. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Another really cool thing about this scene is you get to experience Halloween through the eyes of E.T. as he's dressed as a ghost and the camera is underneath the sheet looking out the eye holes as they're walking across and looking at all the kids in their Halloween costumes. I think this is as close as we're going to get to the actual shot looking down into the cul-de-sac. All the buildings, the houses, they change slightly, but they still line up. In the scene where Elliot returns home without E.T., he asks his brother Michael to go and find him, that he has to find E.T. and bring him back. Michael gets on his bicycle and takes off across town with the government following him. Now keep in mind, Michael's on a bicycle and he takes a few different shortcuts to try to lose the police. Can't really see much of the house anymore, but the roof definitely lines up, especially the garage right above where the green truck is. Michael gets to right about here. You see the police car, the undercover police car, drive right down this alleyway after him. And they take off right down here. The scene jumps further up the alleyway and Michael rides his bicycle over here into this carport where these cars are parked and he turns around. And what's really cool, do you see these three trash cans over here with the wall behind it? Back when they were making E.T., in this scene, the wall wasn't here. And instead of three trash cans, there were two. Michael rides his bike into those, knocks them over, and then he peels up this hillside. And what's really cool is you see this sewer drain cover here the cinder blocks and the wood that's still here it can be seen in the movie in fact i think the wood is identical like it hasn't changed i mean it's wearing away but this is it crazy cool right about here i think this is as close to the angle as we're going to get And as Michael rides off across the hill, successfully escaping the police, you see that paved portion of it. And guess what? The very next scene, they're in Northern California. In this scene, they drive the van right down this street, dragging the plastic tunnel behind them. And if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see this lamppost, this house with the roof and the chimney, as well as this wall right here as they head right down the street. Michael and Elliot are driving through the neighborhood, dragging the plastic tunnel behind them. And it's on this road where Elliot successfully detaches the tubing and it falls into the street. Now in this scene, you can see this house, this wall, as well as some of the architecture in the houses behind them. Gotta look close, but you can see it. It's all right here. The next scene we're going to talk about is the park scene. And it's pretty wild to see this street the way that it looks today lined with trees because back when they filmed E.T. here, it was pretty bare. Now after Elliot and Michael stole the van with E.T. in it, they come right down this street and you see this little construction sign right here? They would have pulled right off the street into the park right there and drove the van right through the park, over in this direction, 
And you're not gonna believe it, but the caterpillar that you can see in the movie, it's still here. Even though the caterpillar is still here, a lot has changed. It's been repainted. It's sunken further into the ground, but the biggest change that I can tell, the sand pit that it was in is no longer here. It's not a sand pit. What is this? Rubber. It's like a rubber play mat for the kids. Rubber. But I have always wanted to come and visit this caterpillar. I don't even know if he has a name, but growing up, being a fan of the movie E.T., this was like E.T. Mecca to be here. So with that, I have to say hello. How you doing, Caterpillar? Come and say hi. Hello. Very cool. It's pretty wild, baby ghoul, that that thing is taller than you. It's not that much taller than me. It's maybe two inches taller than I am, flat-footed. Shut up. <laughs> it's still pretty neat. Now what's cool about this, even though this caterpillar is still here, over here, almost as if the caterpillar would have, would have been looking at it, was another jungle gym, like a monkey bars. It was in the shape of a dome, and it's over there. You can see it when they pull in with the van. They park it right there, and they open the back doors. Lining up this scene, whenever Elliot and Michael and E.T. pull into the park in the van, you see their friends waiting for them on their bikes right next to the Caterpillar. They're looking this way. You see the van. The van opens up. There's E.T. with his glowing stomach. And this always cracks me up because E.T. came out in 1982. Back to the Future came out in 1985. This whole scene, this whole reveal, of E.T. with his glowing stomach reminds me of the first time Marty sees the, the DeLorean in Back to the Future. Please keep in mind that while they were here filming E.T., this entire neighborhood was just being built. So basically, it was a giant playground of these kids and their bikes. Well, in this scene, you can see that house in the center of your screen pretty much exactly where it is. Elliot and his friends are on their bikes riding towards right where I am standing, and the police car comes from the right hand side right over here chasing them and Elliot yells out to the woods. As expected, a lot of time has passed since 1982. But there are a few things that still remain the same. For instance, in this scene, they take a shortcut, which the shortcut would have been right where that gate is today. But if we turn the camera over this way, you see those two walls? There's this one right here and this one right here. In a very quick split second, you can see that in the movie. It's still here. Well, this is a childhood dream come true. Right now I'm standing at the intersection of Tulsa and White Oak, and this street might look familiar because this is the street where Elliot and E.T. and Elliot's friends were riding their bicycles down, and in order to escape the police, they flew off into the air want to draw your attention to that stop sign that's in the center of the street here. Back in 81, 82, when E.T. was being filmed, that wasn't there. Instead, at that intersection, that's where the police would have created the barricade trying to stop Elliot. Now look at the tree on the left-hand side, as well as the tree on the right-hand side, more specifically the branch, the lower branch. In this scene where Elliot is riding right down the center of this street with his red hoodie, you can see that lower branch right before they get there and they take off. So much has obviously changed over the years as it always does. Now keep in mind, E.T. came out in 1982. And at the time of filming this, it's 2021. So we had to really look to try to find clues of reference. One of them we found, if you look very closely, in one of the scenes, you can see this house in the background. More importantly, that window right there. Now it's an octagon shape, but it looks like back whenever they were filming back in 82, it possibly was a diamond shape, or maybe it was just too fuzzy and it still was that shape. 
but this house can be seen, so I know we have the right area. I'm not gonna lie, E.T. to this day is still one of my all-time favorite movies. I still get teary-eyed just watching it. Very special to me growing up, and to be able to stand here where this amazing scene took place blows my mind. And here's a different angle of the scene. They would have been coming right down that street to right where I am standing. And when they got to right about where the yellow stops, that's where they took off. Flying into the air that way, across the intersection, over the police, as they stood there completely dumbfounded. Amazing scene. I think I'm in love with this street. This street is completely different than anything I've seen here in Los Angeles area. I mean, California, there are trees like this, but here in Los Angeles, this is something pretty wild. Well, a little bit of entertainment here for, for the kids who want to come and see the E.T. filming location. Hello. You all right? I'm very dizzy. <laughs> I'm enjoying this day. This is the perfect day for this. I don't know if they can see us, but that was awesome. Now for something I like to call kicks and giggles. Let's walk a little further down the pathway here and see what's on the other side. Not sure if it's really going to be anything, but why the heck not? A little bit of exercise doesn't kill anybody. Some serious sun glare, like a J.J. Abrams movie. Right now, I'm currently walking on this path, and it appears to be open to the public. Now, they have a lot of areas that you can't go to, and I keep hearing this high pitch. It sounds like an alarm. I don't think I'm breaking any laws being here. Something's not right. It's pretty, that's for sure. How come every time we do a video, at least to me, it feels like I'm filming some distant alien world? Same thing for here when it comes to <laughs> ET filming locations. To give you a point of reference where we were standing when we first started talking about the overlook, it's up there. That house that I said that it looked like it was on the other side where you'd get the proper angle, it's that house right there to the upper right hand side of your screen. So I'm just below that. I think I'm supposed to be here. This is just blowing my mind. I'm just loving it. I am loving these California adventures. Wherever I come, I've had luck. It's coming my way. Wherever I go, hard luck. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my 